Welcome to Love Life Academy's Conversation Between Coaches. My name is Heather Drury, and I am here joined by Lisa Gunnett. We are both science-based certified dating and relationship coaches who love to talk all things love, connection, romance, you name it, we're here for it. So today's topic is a really, really important one. Let's just say it is what women want. And I know that this is a complex topic that honestly has a lot of narrative, that has a lot of conversation around it, but has been tried to be diagnosed and, you know, overly simplified through decades and if not through throughout all of history. But we think that we have found a really incredible tool for men to understand women on a really easy to understand simplified level. And that's really what we're here for. So um, before we dive into it, though, Lisa, I want to actually stop and just say how much I appreciate any man that is showing up to listen to this conversation and participate in the discussion and similarly, I want to thank women for allowing the platform for us to be open and honest about what we need instead of letting it be this big mystery that society has always alluded to. I don't think that we're that completely different than one another. And I kind of want to break that narrative. What are your thoughts on that? I agree. Working with both men and women clients, I'm, there are way more similarities than there are differences. And I feel like society likes to play to the differences because it sells things, but we really are looking for the exact same things. And it's, it's really just like speaking different languages. And just like when you travel to another country, what do you do? You want to learn the language. You want to learn the laws and the customs. You want to know when you've offended someone. Right. <laughs> you know? And so we need to do that. As men and women, we need to learn our each other's languages. So this is today talking about what women want, but I'd also like to talk about what men want someday too. Yes, <laughs> Let's do another absolutely video. Absolutely fair. Exactly. <laughs> Stay tuned because that's going to be another one that we definitely dive into. I think that's yeah. so important. And I love that too, the, the idea that language, right? Yes, mm -hmm. at first it's foreign. But then actually, we all kind of have the same mannerisms when we're passionate about things. We all can understand each other. And then you take time to sit in that language and then it becomes second nature to you. So I love that analogy so, so much. So let's throw out the idea that we're also completely separate from one another. Let's kill that one completely and let's start anew, right? We're just right. a little bit different in that we need to understand each other's language, but really at the end of the day, we're not so completely different that it's foreign territory to tap into. So men, come on in. We're not that overly complicated and complex, but I do think that there's some key things that uh, are going to help navigate through our hearts a little bit easier. So what I love to, uh, I, I love so much the very first tip that I think we're both uh, excited to share. Um, but we also want to navigate through and let everybody know that we have actually stumbled into a phenomenal resource that we want to highly recommend for both men and women, any human being, all ages. And that is this book. <laughs> I'm like, surprise. Um, this book, we actually, in our coaching community, in our coaching division, we love diving into literature. We actually have a book club, and our current read is The Man's Guide to Women by Julie and John Gottman. I think that this, we all, when we first read the introduction, we stopped and we were like, this is fun. This isn't a scary book, right? From this book, I think the very first chunk of it, we're not even halfway through this book, you guys. We're we're stopping right here, right now to share information with you because we were so inspired. But I love the idea in the very first chapter and the very first chunk of this book, it literally gives a huge key to winning the woman's heart. And that is what every woman needs, which is trust. Mm -hmm. And I love too that they say, look, everybody needs trust, that we're not discrediting that, but there's a different layer of trust that women need to feel really safe with a man. Mm -hmm. 
Lisa, what were your thoughts when you when you read that and first took it all in? What were your thoughts going through your brain? You know, I love this book and what we've read so far. Um, with trust, it the Gottmans point out that it's more it's about more than physical trust and safety. And I think that that's where men's brains go a lot is that protection piece. And we want that. We do want that. It's biologically wired into us. Yeah. But we need that emotional safety as well. We need to know that we can talk without being tuned out or ignored or dismissed. And I think that that's a big disconnect in that language barrier between men and women. Men want to go right into solution mode. Uh, and, and they talk a lot about this in the book on the play yard and give examples, which is really helpful. You know, just the example of the little boys that one boy starts crying in the middle of a game and the other boys stop and and they go what's wrong and i'm not getting the ball and and then the captain whoever's kind of in the lead goes okay let's keep playing tommy's getting the ball you know and, right. and they just move forward and the emotion is just quick it's just solution oriented and women we want to talk about it we want to feel through it and we need that we're just that's in our wiring. And when men understand that that's part of our language and to just listen instead of trying to solve, even if they don't agree, they are, they are going to, as the book says, get their needs met a lot better. <laughs> exactly. And I think that you're right. You know, men on a physical level, we want the ability to feel safe with a man. The reality is, is that as a woman, and so for men to understand this, I understand that it's difficult, but there is a level of physical fear that women feel when it comes to men. And I want that to be, I want that to be understood on a level where we want to be able to know you've goddess, you're going to protect us. You're not going to demean us. You're not going to, um, you know, make us feel unsafe, mm -hmm. which is level one, right? Level one basics of being able to have a woman feel that she can trust you is to make her feel, I'm not going to demean you. I'm not going to do anything physically to harm you or emotionally to harm you. So that's like level one basics. Um, I think the next level of understanding that a woman can feel that they can trust their partner or the, you know, the man that's wooing her or the man that is interested in showing interest in her, whatever stage of the relationship you might be in, is to show up and do what you say you're going to do. Mm. Right? Mm. Yes. And when they shared that, little increments of breadcrumbs of this, hey, I'm going to be here by five. You show up at five. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm going to stop at the grocery store. Would you like me to pick anything up? I'm using a silly example. And you do it. These little tiny moments that seem minuscule, no brainers, are ways that a woman is feeling safe, secure, and she can trust you. I think that that's just so powerful and overlooked that those little moments are really, really impactful to a woman's security level with a man. And it's it's signals, right? It, it, I think that we all need to be aware of the signals that we're putting out. And if you're showing up late, if you're if you're not being consistent, mm. you're not being consistent and considerate. Right. You are not signaling to her that you are trustworthy. Right. Right. So then, then what happens? Our brains go to, I don't feel safe. I don't feel understood. I don't feel secure, you know, and the, the vulnerability, the intimacy that both parties need is now not going to happen when the lights go out later tonight. It yeah. just can't happen. <laughs> no, just kidding. That's terrible. Right. right? Exactly. <laughs> so it's those little moments. Again, it's not a big mystery. Do what you say you're going to do, show up for her. And those little touch points too of, of letting her know I've got you. Um, they give examples of pulling out the chair, of opening a door. And I know society today says that's outdated or some of society might say that. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's these small gestures to show 
I've got you. You can trust me. Just little ways throughout the day. So that's that's a big tip number one. Men, write that one down. And women, allow him to show that he is trustworthy. Celebrate those moments. You have a responsibility in this too. Let him know that you appreciate it. I think that's another tip too that we want to be clear about, right? I like that. Yes, we do have a part in this and we need to show our appreciation. That's a big part of how we help a man to feel seen. Yes, exactly. And the other thing too, is if you are in that courting stage, this is another big important tip, I think for the ladies, even if that man is not right for you, you decide it's not the right person for me and you end things. It's still really important to honor that this person is showing signs of trustworthiness. Don't just, you know, shoo it away or disrespect it because we want to condition men to understand you're safe with me to show me that you are trustworthy. Even if the relationship didn't end the way that you hoped it would, we still want to honor the behavior of men for being really respectful and trustworthy guys. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So the other tip that I love, it's like, how do you further from that show a woman that you are trustworthy? And oh my gosh, Lisa, I think that this is the coolest tip, the easiest to understand. Get your pen and pencil out, gentlemen, women to write this down, because I really feel like this is so easy. They broke it down into the easiest acronym even so that you can be really successful in earning a woman's trust and letting her know that you've got her back. So what the Gottmans share is attunement, attuning into your partner, tuning into your partner's needs. I just was blown away. What what were your thoughts, Lisa, when you read that part? It, it really is. It's it is tuning into your partner. It is paying attention. And, and one of the things that I really like when they are talking about attunement is that it's not what anyone else says, whatever Mm. your partner says that they need, they know themselves better than any of the dating coaches or anybody out there. Trust your unique partner and listen, you know, tune into what they're saying that they need uniquely. Right. they know themselves and their bodies and their hearts better than anyone outside of them. So trust that. And they're going to trust you. That's beautiful. I think that's so important. Mm -hmm. Every woman and man is so unique. So listen to her, tune into her. I love that so much, but there is a super simple way. Um, Like I said, they have an acronym. So I just, you know, briefly want to touch on that. Um, But inside of this book, they go through really wonderful detail. And I actually want to read one little sentence from this book on page seven that I highlighted twice. (laughs) That when men attune to their women, there is less fighting, more Mm. frequent and better sex. Mm. And Mm. both men and women no longer feel so alone. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yes. There's nothing worse than being in a relationship and feeling more alone in that relationship than out of it. It's crazy. <laughs> right? Which is totally, you deal, we, we deal with clients every day that that is the fear. That was the experience prior. So how, how do I make sure that that doesn't happen again? Yes. So the uh, acronym is actually a tune. So it's a TT, I'll get to that in a second, U-N-E. So the first one that they talk about is A stands for attend. Mm -hmm. Give undivided attention. Mm. And I think that that is, I feel like that's a good first step, right? What do you think? Yes, yes. And for all our quality time, love language people out there, this comes naturally, but it doesn't for everyone. So really putting the phones away and and eye contact is so important. And we forget about that. We don't feel seen if you're not looking at us. We feel like an afterthought. We feel dismissed. Mm -hmm. So really make sure that you're putting the distractions away, that you're making good eye contact, that you're showing up for us. Right. That's so powerful. Those simple, simple things, put the phone away, make eye contact. Boom. You're, you're in it. You're there. You're yeah. right. And that yeah. actually goes to the next, uh, uh, part of the, the easy to understand acronym TT. 
turn toward, and I don't know about you, Lisa, this is my all time favorite way to express intimacy with friends, family, anybody that's important to you. Mm -hmm. When you turn toward your partner and adding to that, making that eye contact and even leaning in a little bit, yeah, you're showing your partner, I'm here, I'm present, my whole body is into this conversation. You're yes. safe. So sexy. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is so sexy when you feel like you're being paid attention to and understood. It, that is sexy. <laughs> yes. All it is. Exactly. It is wonderful. So your body language plays a huge part in being able to trust a partner. The U stands for understand. And I like this one too, because actually you had in the beginning of this conversation said something really profound. Don't assume, right? Don't try and fix. Don't, you know, do all of these things where it's like, oh, it happened. Let's move on. Work to understand what your partner is experiencing. You know, I thought it was really interesting. And I believe it was in chapter one. I did read a little bit ahead, but uh, <laughs> so good. Um, but they talk about understanding being an intellectual pursuit. Mm. And, you know, so that's, you can understand the problem, but to really sit in it with your partner, to really sit in the mud with them. Empathy is when you are not just understanding so that you can solve the problem, but you're really just there to kind of hold space and you are listening, even if you don't agree. So, you know, it's, there's understanding, but also empathy along with it to just really be and, and not try to problem solve. Exactly. Not try to problem solve, just work to understand asking open-ended questions. Yes. Uh, yeah. Right. That is just another really simple thing to remind yourself when you're listening, trying to understand is just ask open-ended questions. Mm -hmm. And it really allows for that deeper level of understanding, which is again, really special to women's communication styles. Yes. And then this one's a little more complex. This one, I feel the N stands for non-defensive listening. Mm. This one can be tough because we're talking about human beings that have egos, that have their own point of view. And so how do you think, how would you suggest non-defensive listening be happen? What what steps would you provide? Mm. And and it is challenging, especially in in when it you're the topic when she's annoyed with, yeah, right. when you're the person that is the problem in the moment. That can be yeah. really hard. And you know, really, you can look at your body language. Make sure you're not like this, you know, because she's not feeling. Yeah, right. she's not feeling like she can talk to you when you're. This is closing yourself off right yes. here. So so try to take a breath pay attention to your body language. Mindfulness is huge when you're in the moment in something and just pay attention to your words too. Are they soft? Are they curious? Mm. Are you, are you being curious? Like you said, the open-minded questions, you know, that allows her to unfold, you know, this emotion and, and just slowly let it out until it's just emptied. Cause we just need to empty out guys. We just, need to empty out what's in our heads <laughs> and have a safe space for that to land. Yeah. Right. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and I think a good strategy too, for how to be non-defensive is paying attention to the moment. If you are feeling your body become, Ooh, I don't like this. This doesn't feel right. Being able to communicate that to your partner and say, Hey, this is important to me, but right now, can we just maybe take a break and come back so that I can be actively engaged and listen. I think that with the right person, they're going to say, well, I don't want to do that, but I understand. So yes, let's take a break. I'm going to go this way. You go that way. We'll come back together at another time. And that really is a beautiful thing when emotions are high. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. want to take a moment to let our nervous system settle down a little yeah. bit, collect our thoughts. And, and it's, there's no shame in asking for a timeout. And, and that's that self-awareness piece is to know when you are overstimulated, when your nervous system is lit up like the 4th of July and something's going to come out of your mouth, that's 
really not going to benefit this relationship, call that time out. Don't exactly. know yourself and when you need to do that. Yes. Yes. And respect your partner when they say, cha -cha yes. right? Like, no, yes. like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate them. Like you said earlier, appreciate that they are showing up and tuning into themselves exactly. and they are having that self-awareness and, and wanting to solve this in a healthy way. Exactly. That. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. And, and no matter who you are, no matter how educated you are, <laughs> no matter how experienced you are, emotions that run high can cause damage because we are human. So don't be so hard on yourself. Work to understand that and definitely use the timeout method. I think that's great. I love the little hand signal that you did too. <laughs> I've used it. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm like, I might use that actually. That's great. And then the final letter in the attune uh, word that you are going to, you know, keep with you while you're working your way through understanding women on a deeper level is empathize. Mm. I I'm jump the gun on that. <laughs> right. But I, I, I love this so much as a full circle. All of this is to empathize. All of this is to clue into the emotions that she's feeling and honoring them. The other thing that they said in this book that I really radiated, uh, resonated with me was, uh, that no matter what they're feeling, it's their truth. Yes. And that was really powerful. So you are honored in your feelings and make sure that you are allowing her to feel the emotions that she's feeling and work to empathize with her and be gentle and kind. And I think that that's going to really lay the foundation for trust when you follow all of these steps. Yes. Yes. And nothing will put a woman on the defense faster than if you're telling her how to feel. Right. <laughs> so allow her to allow her to feel her emotions. They're, they're valid and they are fact to her. And that's something that they say in the book, her feelings are fact to her, to her. even exactly. if you don't agree with them. Yeah. And you don't have to, yeah. and that's okay, but you can empathize with her because you love her and you want her to feel trusted, trustworthy, that you're trustworthy. Yes. So I love this so much. I think that this really brought in an easy to understand step-by-step step what women really want in a partner. This is it, guys. This is a beautiful beginning to creating the foundation of a loving, um, intimate, healthy relationship. So mm -hmm. practice this every day. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't just have to be with your romantic partner. You can practice these, these steps on friends, family, relationships outside of romantic relationships, because really, truly, um, the more that you practice, and this is such a beautiful skill that when she comes into your life and you just want to love her up and she's the perfect woman for you, this is going to go a really, really long way in your relationship, right? hundred percent. This is a great tool to have in your toolbox. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And she's going to be like, how is he so amazing? And ta-da, just following a few steps that are simple to understand that you can implement today. Yeah. So thank you, Lisa. I love this conversation so much. And again, Anybody that's looking for real tips on how to understand a woman on a deeper level, go out, buy this book, get it on Audible. It's really fun to listen to. I know you and I both are kind of multi-listening and reading. Yeah. Um, the guy that's reading it is fun and engaging and super, super interesting. Rent it from your local library, whatever you need to do, and make sure that you dig into this puppy because it's a beautiful wealth of knowledge. We hope this has been helpful. And if you're looking for more tips on how to be successful in healthy, meaningful connections in your life, follow us and like this video so that we know that it's the topic that you're interested in. And of course, contact us if you'd like to work with a dating and relationship coach, because we are here to serve you and create more meaningful connections for all of you. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you. This has been so much fun. Definitely. <laughs>